Hostel was released 18 years ago and with Thanksgiving coming out soon, also directed by Eli Roth, I figured it'd be a good time to go back and revisit one of the most iconic and bloody horror movies of the 2000s. This is gonna be fun. Hostel was the second ever feature film directed by Eli Roth and basically follows two American backpackers as they're backpacking through Europe looking for drugs and European girls. Paxton, Josh, and their Icelandic friend Ollie eventually hear about a hostel in Slovakia rumored to be full of beautiful girls. So they go there, and it actually is. And like they heard, the girls love Americans. But it eventually turns into something much darker and sinister than they could have ever imagined as some of them start to disappear. A lot of people don't know that Quentin Tarantino was actually one of the biggest reasons why Hostel ever got made. If you go back and watch the movie, you'll notice at the beginning of the movie it says Quentin Tarantino Presents. So essentially what happened is after Cabin Fever came out, Eli Roth was getting offered all kinds of directorial jobs, but there were mostly horror remakes and stuff like that. He got offered a Texas Chainsaw remake and some other movies, but Quentin Tarantino was one of the biggest influences on convincing Eli Roth not to do a horror remake but to make his own thing. There's even a story that Eli Roth has since said that he was swimming one day in Quentin Tarantino's pool, and they were kind of just like bouncing ideas off of each other's heads, and Eli Roth presented this kind of basic concept to what we now know as hostile to Tarantino, and Tarantino was essentially like, you know, that sounds pretty fucked up, but uh, you know, I think you should make that. It actually sounds pretty cool. Now I've got to say right off the bat, I really like this movie. I have always liked this movie ever since I saw it in theaters in 2005. I remember I was a college freshman at the time, probably the perfect demographic for this type of a movie at that time. And also this movie is just a really big trendsetter for a lot of the movies that we see that are similar to today. And like movies like Terrifier, for example. And I'm not just talking about the gore. I'm talking about the fact where you can take a movie budget that's much lower than what you'd expect. And the whole reason behind it, and Eli Roth even says this, he didn't want to take all the corporate money from some of the bigger studios and stuff like that because they were just going to get in the way of what he wanted to make. And I just really respect that, you know? just trying to really do anything you can to put your vision onto the screen. This movie is kind of that classic story of like the obnoxious Americans traveling to Europe, backpacking, just getting high and drunk and trying to pick up girls, pissing off Europeans along the way, and just overall just making Americans kind of look like jackasses. I also love that this movie is packed with early 2000s technology. Paxons, like using a Motorola Razor throughout the movie, and you're just like, damn, I miss those days. If you watched this movie and you were in your teens or 20s, did this movie also just give you like an irrational fear of Eastern Europe at the time? I don't know about you, but it definitely did for me. I was like, shit, I'm never going there. I really do think that Eli Roth just does an incredible job with the emotions of these characters who on the surface just seem like drunk, obnoxious Americans who basically want to just hump anything that they can at any time. But you really do start to care about the characters when they peel back that layer of who they really are. They care so deeply about their friends. When their friends start to disappear, you can just see like a place where there's so many beautiful people and drinks and drugs flowing and just all the things on the surface that would seem like such a great time but it can quickly go down and feel like hell very, very fast for these characters when they start to lose their friends. Surprisingly, the first half of this movie is not gory at all. Outside of one particular scene where we almost get to see a girl get her toe cut off and then it cuts away, there is literally like no blood at all in the first half of this movie. In the first half of this movie though, there is a lot of titties. A lot of tits. So essentially, Eli Roth wanted us to follow these characters first before just getting into the blood and gore. He thought if he kicked up the blood and gore from the beginning, it would just be boring by the end of the movie. He wanted us first to kind of get to know these characters, have some fun and funny moments, and kind of just see their journey in general, and then kind of let the movie slowly get darker and darker. 
What's also interesting to me about the story in Hostel is that the first act and the third act of the movie kind of mirror each other in a way, which is interesting. In the first act of the movie, you've got basically tourists who are paying for hookers. And in the third act of the movie, you basically got these businessmen that are paying to torture people. But they kind of mirror each other in a way and kind of touch on that underlying theme of the movie of just exploitation in general. Speaking of exploitation, that Achilles part in the movie, like I knew it was coming. I've seen this movie, obviously, but still I was like, ah, oh, holding on to my seat, just like, ah, oh, Jesus, I cannot look. Eli Roth just does an incredible job in this movie showing how ruthless the world can be. He shows in this movie how there's an evil out there that's so emotionless, it doesn't matter how many times you beg for your life, it is not gonna change a single thing that they're gonna do to you in just a moment. A movie like this definitely gets taken up a notch when it has a great villain, and I think John Vlasic just does an amazing job as the main psychopath in the story, and my God, those creepy eyes. I love the moment when Paxton truly realizes that something pretty messed up has probably happened here when he comes back to the hostel after passing out in the bar stores the night before, and then he sees the new girls in the hostel basically reciting the exact same lines that the girls that they hooked up with did. And then you kind of find yourself, at least for me, excited to like watch this character piece together these clues and try to figure out what happened to his friends. It's just such a cool realization for that character and I think it's pulled off really, really well. I also just love how Eli Roth paints this story centralized around this theme of how scary it can be to be so far from home and what you know and the laws that you know and the red flags that you know to kind of avoid at home. You basically follow this character who just has this undeniable helplessness because no one believes his story or even tries to help him. I also think something has to be said about the way the victims are taken in this movie. It's just executed so well. It's not like people are just being snatched up instantly off the streets. It's very, very slow and methodical in a way. It's like you get to meet these girls and then you get to go out with them for a night. One person disappears. You maybe get to go out with them for a second night. You get to have sex with them and then slowly people start to disappear. Even at the art show, Paxton gets to like walk in. Everybody seems very, very harmless. He even gets to walk in and see his dead friend and then boom, they take him. I don't know. There's just something like so sinister about how slow and methodical they go about taking people away. There's also something just so interesting in this story to me that I think about, which is the thought of you could have a neighbor or a businessman that just lives down the street from you who possibly has some of the most evil, sinister thoughts you could ever possibly imagine. They just haven't had the opportunity to pull off those thoughts for real without any repercussions. But in this movie, they touch on that. Just kind of, you know, makes you look a little differently at your neighbors a bit. What's also interesting about this story in this movie to me is it explores that ultra wealthy class of people who have kind of became so desensitized to the normal luxuries of life. They're kind of desperately looking for that next way to kind of get a thrill. They've gone on every big vacation. They've had every nice supercar. They've had every nice big house. They've had sex with all kinds of people. They've done drugs. They've done this. They've done that. And they're kind of just desperately looking for that next way to get a thrill. And they'll do it in any way that they can. And I just think that's a really interesting aspect of the movie and pulled off really well. Now, this next part I'm going to talk about, is going to be a bit of a spoiler. So there's your warning there. But this movie also has some really, really intense moments. Like that part when Paxton is about to get the chainsaw. And he's essentially the one last character you're rooting for. And you're like, well, he's screwed. I have no idea how he's going to get out of this one. And just that whole moment on how he gets out of the chair and just goes through every way to just escape and by any means necessary, and damn, I mean any means necessary, is just really, really intense. I already knew that he was going to escape, but I was still like, holy shit, this is really intense. And I've got to talk about that moment when Paxton and the other girl arrive back in town after escaping that art museum from hell and they see the two girls that set them up in this entire thing. And then on top of that, Paxton sees the guy from Amsterdam, who also essentially we find out set them up in this entire thing, and then he runs them over. That is just such a damn good like revenge moment in this movie. And honestly, that's gotta be one of the best revenge moments I've ever seen in a horror movie. And then right after that, those kids who we've seen throughout a big chunk of the movie, their story kind of comes full circle as Paxton essentially pays them with gum and candy to kill the guys who are chasing them. 
And when that kid crushes that guy's skull in, well, both of their skulls, and it's just like, holy shit. I just think the writing in the second half of this movie is so damn good. It's relentless. It never lets up for a second. I mean, after those kids bash those two guys' skulls in, you're just like, what is possibly going to happen next? And then you get that gut-wrenching moment when the girl sees her reflection and then decides to jump in front of the train to kill herself. And you're just like, damn, this movie truly does not ever let up. And I really enjoy the ending to this movie. Just when you think Paxton is free and clear, and as an audience, you can kind of finally breathe. Nope, Paxton hears the voice of the guy from the train earlier who did all that stuff to his friend, and then goes and gets his revenge on him in like a very, very satisfying way. But I just think the ending to this movie is pulled off so damn well and lets the audience think that you're finally getting a sense of relief, but just lets you know once again, Nope, this movie is not letting up. Thanks so much, everybody, for checking out my review of Hostel. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Also, if you want more horror content from me, make sure you check out one of these videos next to me right now. But anyways, take care of yourselves, everybody, and I will see you in the next one.